Oh, crap. All right, so <laughs> I'm going on no sleep. Had a stupidly long day at work and very un very annoying, very fruitless, and very headache -y, inducing -y, and words are hard, people. But I'm wearing Adrian APM on my chest. Life is good. Go give him a follow. He's a nice feller from Wisconsin. If I remember, I'll leave a link down below. But if not, just look up Adrian APM. He's the man of a billion voices. He did a really funny video where he chews bubblegum. You should go check it out. Um, yeah, anyway, this is my weekly comic book review. Kind of a short stack this week, thankfully, because I had a busy day, like I said, and, uh, well, for those of you that like it when I'm annoyed and tired and stuff, you should love this video, because, yeah, it's probably going to be incoherent. At best. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's September 1st. Oh, crap, it's my birthday later this week? Ah, never mind. Anyways, let's do this. Worst to best. Like always, first time here, I'm not always as cranky. Well, I probably am, but whatever. Resilient number one, uh, it's shiny. I like the shiny. It's also $10. I didn't know, I didn't, okay. Uh, full disclosure, I did not look at the price when I picked it up. I was like, oh, shiny, first issue. I shall get it. I regret getting this. Uh, it's an origin issue, kind of, sort of. It doesn't really even get to that. Uh, it's a flashy, backy, jump around and timey wimey story. It's just a cluttered, hot mess. I and and like it's not incoherent, but it, it was borderline for a bit. The characters, some of them are hard to tell apart, and you know, like the usual. It's it's yeah, it's it's yeah. I don't really like it. I'm not, I'm not getting issue two. It's probably 20 bucks at this rate, too. $10 for a first issue? It's not a thick book. It's just foil. I mean, I get it. you got to push your product, but come on. You want people to buy it? Make it a $3, $4 book. Learn from Todd McFarlane, people. Also, I did not buy Spawn because I don't care about Spawn. So, whatever. We're, we're on to, okay, second best. Second worst. Worst. Yeah. Wonder Girl. I just didn't. I liked it at first, but this book is losing me. Like, real fast. It's kind of, again, jumps all over the place. Like... You're sort of learning the origin story, and it turns out it's really not that interesting. And, uh, I don't know. There's Eros. And Eros. Arrowver? Erosverse? Art's fine by Joelle Jones when she's doing it. There's another artist I think are in here doing it, but it, maybe not, but it seems like it for part of it. I don't know. Just get to the part where she's a badass and stop telling this stupid, boring origin. Um, okay. Telepaths number one. This... Okay, and Steve Epting, his art is always clean and, and concise and, and, you know, detailed and kind of flat. <laughs> but it, but it's effective, it tells a good story, and you sort of know what's going on. And then it's J. Michael Straczynski, who wrote for television. And this reads like a TV pilot. It's very wordy. It jumps all over the place from, from scene to scene to scene and back and back and back. It's like, you know, it's, it is. It's like you're watching the first episode of Lost, but not in as interesting a way because it's in a comic book form and it should just be a TV show. So I get it. You're wanting to get this picked up. You want to turn it into a TV show, but write like it's a comic book and not like it's a goddamn TV show. That's all right. We're getting to the fine section. It's not that many shitty books this week, so, you know. Uh, Hellions number 15. Normally Hellions is higher on my list. I don't know. Again, I'm cranky this week, and I like Zeb Wells' writing, and I kind of like Mr. Sinister, but, like, I don't know. It's just kind of jumpy and goofy. And, and and sometimes I like the jumpy and goofy, but just not in this particular issue. I just don't care about whatever storyline you're doing right now. And and I think some of it's like they're saddled with the leftovers of X of Swords, and they're trying to wrap that up, and, and like, it's just... I think they just need to start telling their own damn stories, not try and tie in all the X books into all of them. Because it just makes for a weak product. And this is starting to get a little weak. But I'm kind of, I'm going to just be controversial. I'm kind of glad Hickman's off the book, off the main X title. Because no one was following along with this stuff and no one was doing it like right. When Hickman was writing the, his Hickman books, they were Hickman, Hickman, and fine and all that. But like nobody else knew how to get a handle on it. And I think this needs to get past that and get back to just some fun, wacky storytelling where they're not trying to get shoehorned into the Hickman's grand idea. And also the fact that no one can die with the Hickman verse, it really takes away any stakes. And I get nobody actually dies in comics, but whatever. All right. Uh, Fear State Alpha. This is all right. I like the art quite a bit uh, by Federici. 
And the story, it's the story. It's Tiny Onion. It's James. It's here's James is leaving book. It's just supposed to be his like grand finale. I don't think there's a planned grand finale because he just got thrown a buttload of money by Substack. And so I said, go to Substack instead and get off of Batman, thankfully, because I hated his boring as shit Batman run. And I'm swearing a lot this week. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, and this is not quite as boring. It's got some interesting elements, and it's finally doing some scarecrow -y stuff, kind of. But I got a feeling there's going to be a, like, a, they're going to pull the rug out of the scarecrow, and it's going to end up being pretty boring. I could be wrong, uh, but it was all right. It's just, there's, it's got that fear state. It's got the peacemaker. It's got miracle now. It's got all the crap that Tynan's been doing. It's just kind of like, just do it. And like, it's still rambly. Stop rambly rambling and just get to the point of it. But just tell a concise story with this stupid title. All right, firepower number 15. This is fun. It, it's firepower. It's always, it's been a fun series forever. Like since the inception, uh, it's been fun. Now this is, this is also fun. It's the next big bad or the reveal, the true big bad. It's Kirkman. So like, when do you think it's the big bad? It's not the big bad. There's a bigger bad, or there's a twisty bad, or the sides are twisting, and it's twisty, turny, topsy, turvy, straight to curvy. Uh, yeah. Sammy's great on the art. As long as Kirkman and Sammy are, are writing this book, it's gonna, or are doing the book together, it's going to be a solid issue. It's got some soap opera -y family elements and stuff, but they're not resolved in a crazy soap opera -y manner, which I enjoy. It doesn't quite feel like a true real relationship, but it's getting close. Uh, and... Yeah, I'm I'm along for this ride. It's just kind of this issue was sort of a middle of the pack issue, but not you know whatever. It's fine. All right, Infinite Frontier. This is the last of this, and uh, this or no no. There's one. Oh, there is. Well, holy crap! There's one more. <laughs> I thought this was the end. I thought I really thought this is the last issue. I thought they were just setting up the next like Crisis on Infinite Infinite Infinities and DC's crappily named events. But apparently, it's setting up. Uh, um, it, this is the best one of this series by far so far. Uh, Williamson's writing it. He's going to be the new Batman writer. And he can do big events. And this is sort of a big event that uses a lot of DC characters I don't know a ton about, which is fine. Uh, I wish in the earlier issues there was a little bit more explanation as to who they were. But I, I didn't. I, I can live with it. And uh, I liked what they did with the Black Lantern in here. And I, I like sort of where this event's kind of heading. And yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, all right, this one uh, is surprisingly high on my list, and I wasn't even sure I was going to pick it up, but the Aquaman 80th Anniversary Special, because it's Aquaman. Here's the thing, I don't know a ton about Aquaman, because who the hell does? Nobody reads Aquaman, right? Like, it hasn't been a title for a while, but they're bringing him back in the fall, and you need some preview stuff in here. Uh, there's some actually pretty decent little short stories. The Dan Waters one's pretty good. Um, there's an uh, Aqualad, right? Aqua Kid, Aqua Boy... One of those is in here. I can't remember who writes what. The art's all pretty solid throughout of this. And um, yeah, this is 10 bucks, but you get 80 pages as opposed to the shiny full nonsense earlier. So this is really solid. I, I really like this. Even, like, even if you're not the biggest Aquaman fan, and I'm not also not the biggest like tiny chunk little short story fan, the, but the ones in here for the most part were pretty good. There's like one or two clunkers, but like for a book that's got like seven or eight little stories in here, that's not, not a horrible relationship. Ratio, ratio, yeah. And oh, they're also setting up the new Black Ant Banta series, which is apparently coming, which that actually sounds kind of interesting too. So, Aquaman, not bad. Um, which order am I doing this in? Okay, I've only got a couple left, and they're all these are all sort of interchangeable. Not really. These next two are kind of interchangeable in my book. Dark Age is number one. Um, this is Tom Taylor playing around with the Marvel playground. Uh, you know, Tom Taylor does these big events all, and stuff, and he was over on DC, and, like, he's just playing around in Marvel. This is supposed to come out ages ago. I think, like, last year at some time, and then, you know, the world sort of ended, and we all have to wear masks, and, like, people that wear comic, read comic books for some reason bitch about wearing masks, which makes no sense, because, like, superheroes, masks, folks, deal with it. Put some masks on. Go get vaccinated. Stop doing, taking that horse pill nonsense so we can get out of this crap, you idiots. Anyway, <laughs> with that, I'm sure we're going to get some downvotes on this one. Yeah, let's do it. Don't care. Don't care. Take your ivermectin. Go listen to Joe Rogan. That idiot just got diagnosed with, with uh, COVID and is taking that ivermectin. I, whatever. The horse, he dewormer. I don't know. Maybe maybe Joe just has worms. And yeah, I'm tangenting all over the place on this one. And I don't care. Because after this, I'm going to go to bed. I'm, I, I record this at night. It'll come out in the morning. It's morning I have more work now. Let's do it. Anyways, back to the review you're sort of here for, maybe. Um, yeah. 
what if the lights went out in the world? And this sort of says why and how the lights went out, and it's a big, bombastic event. Uh, ties in some things. Some people die right off the bat. It's journey to the center of the earth. There's celestial-ish thingies and big baddies, and you don't know what's going on. And uh, then, uh, yeah, I don't know how many issues this is, but, like, it's fun. Tom Taylor writes fun stuff. And fun, 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 fun. Um, yeah, I don't think everyone on this cover survives. Oh, well. Uh, Geiger, number six. This wraps up the first arc, and it's a giant size uh, issue. Look, big and thick boy. Oh, and look, guess what? It's only four ninety nine as opposed to $10 that foil nonsense earlier. Uh, yeah, this is a satisfying wrap-up. Uh, Jeff Johns could also tell a story. I know not all, everyone loves him. I know he's kind, kind of can be some of a douche, or at least harbors douches. Is it douche harbor? Whatever. Uh, Gary Frank's art, solid. Solid, as always. Um, this sort of, yeah, it, it, it concludes the first big thing. And it actually, like, the next thing they're going to tell is not a Geiger story. It's going to be set in the Geiger universe, but not, not a whole lot of spoilers there. But they're, like, take, they're taking a geiger break from the Geiger. And it's, they're setting up their own little universe, their own little playground. I'm down for it. Um, I like Geiger. I, I, I don't want to give spoilers as far as how it ended, but it, um, you know, it, it does wrap it up. Uh, you learn to care more about Geiger in, probably in this issue than you did in some of the others, and you learn to care more about some of the other characters, and, uh, yeah, it's satisfying. Satisfying, folks. Satisfying. Which is what? 9-0? Is that satisfying? All right. Best book of the week by miles. By, like, leaps and bounds. My favorite book of the week. It's been my favorite series. I know, and here's the thing. I know I'm not the only one to say this, and I'm like kind of want to. Sometimes, sometimes I'm guilty of picking other books just because, like, I don't want to be that popular pick. I don't want it to be like the you know the same as everybody else. But when it's the best book of the week, it's the best book of the week, and uh, that is Layla Star number five. It's the conclusion to Layla Star, the many deaths of Layla Star. Sorry, that's the full title. Um, if you've not read this, please pick it up and trade. It is fantastic. It's it's thoughtful. It's meditative. It's funny. It's uh, quirky. It's a lot of things. It's it's a it's about life and death and big ideas and choices and it's a, it's a great story. It's one of those like you would when you buy it, you read it, you want to pass it on to somebody else to read. That's this. That that is the many deaths of Layla Star. And uh, yeah, without a doubt, it, it, and I was worried because I wasn't sure they were going to stick the landing. You know, it, it's like I really enjoyed the first four issues so much. That I was like, oh, oh where is this going to go? Because it's the first four had this structural storytelling, and the, the way they do it, um, you know, you're kind of like the 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 main character of Leo Star does have some character growth throughout the series, but you're also like, how the heck are they? His is Ron B going to pull this off? And oh yeah, Ron B pulls this off. Honestly, I love the ending to this series. I love the entire thing from start to finish, and I don't say that about a lot of books. Like I don't, I probably don't really have any criticisms. Yeah, I don't have any criticism about this series at all. And that's a rarity for me because, you know, I'm a critical bastard. But, many deaths of Little Star. Just just read it. Uh, if you disagree with me, that's all right. I mean, you, you've, you've been wrong before. All right. I'm going to go get some sleep. Don't be a dick even when you have insomnia. <sighs>